Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's uh, class. I uh, hope that you had the opportunity to go through the last class and uh, we will briefly look at what we did uh, last time. Uh, we started looking at the uh, nomenclature of the syn and anti aldol which were also uh, called as uh, uh, erythro and trio respectively. And we saw that uh, if we draw a, a main carbon chain as zigzag form and then of course we, we can then uh, expect that, uh, that the uh, once we have this here then whatever the substituents are here for example here methyl hydroxy or methyl in this direction therefore we can anticipate and say that okay this is a syn aldol. And uh, likewise anti aldol and of course these are called as erythro or the other one is called as a 3 o that we looked at it. Then we also saw that how uh, Z enolate uh, can give uh, high selectivity in terms of uh, syn aldol. Uh, we took all the 4 cases and we saw how the, um, the large ratio of the syn aldol is likely to form when we start with the Z enolate. Uh, then we also looked at uh, the various uh, features that are needed for uh, obtaining a Z enolate and uh, we saw that the uh, formation of the Z enolate is much better, uh, much easier and also uh, the formation of the corresponding syn aldol from Z enolate is also uh, very, very uh, much uh, easy. Then uh, this, was the, this was the work that uh, uh, David Evans uh, has uh, reported and so then the uh, work related to the formation of the E enolate uh, was also taken up by other people and especially H. C. Brown and uh, as we saw that uh, it depends on the size of the uh, substituents say you have here R2 groups that is uh, two R groups attached to boron and uh, O triflate. If this R2 R group which is two substituents has R, they are large in size and then they um, uh, all they allow the, uh, the uh, uh, E enolate to form in case we use a small base. And uh, the small base as we discussed forms irreversible complex with the boron and therefore it allows the formation of the E enolate. We discussed the transition state part. And in the case of Z enolate what we have also seen that if uh, the base is very large then the base uh, like such as uh, this uh, Hunix base diisopropyl di ethylamine and the, such a base then allows uh, the uh, formation of um, the uh, reversible complex with the boron and therefore that leads to the formation of the Z enolate as the major product. And based on these uh, Z enolate and E enolates that we can uh, anticipate to form syn and anti aldol products to form. So now we will look at uh, what are the other auxiliaries that uh, are on, uh, required uh, to get highly enantioselective reactions. So far we were talking about the uh, racemic products where there is a possibility of getting uh, different types of products uh, in terms of their syn or anti aldol. But now we will also look at how the enantioselective reactions can be done with which kind of uh, chiral uh, enolates. So uh, as I have repeatedly been telling that David Evans name and David Evans of course has uh, introduced this oxazolidinones which we have earlier also considered. 
So now uh, what we have is uh, if we take a, take a ketone um, and uh, take a, a compound such as this in which uh, the, uh, this particular part is attached to the auxiliary that is uh, made from some of these amino acids. Uh, if you start with s valinol or r valinol then as you can see from here this particular auxiliary which is shown here is uh, uh, prepared from, from this particular s valinol and uh, if we uh, convert this uh, uh, particular oxygen and nitrogen and make it as a, as a carbonyl group here then of course we get uh, a, a auxiliary like this and from the nitrogen you can then attach the with the help of say suppose if we have RCH to CO Cl and if we have NH here we deprotonate then we can make a bond between the two of them. And that is what would lead to if we just turn it around this is what is the product that is going to form. So this comes from S valinol. Likewise if we take R valinol then this will be beta right now this is alpha oriented it can be beta oriented if we take from R valinol and of course we, we can start use uh, many of these kinds of uh, uh, chiral uh, auxiliaries to make different types of oxazolidinones like this where the substituents here would be fixed in terms of their configuration. So uh, this is how uh, the with these various kinds of uh, chiral auxiliaries from uh, uh, different amino acids have been uh, reported and uh, of course this is non-ephedrine uh, and uh, the corresponding oxazolidinones can form. So let us see what can we do with it. Now as you can see here that when such a compound is deprotonated uh, we expect this type of uh, uh, intermediate to form. The reason for that is the uh, it forms a 6 member uh, chelate with the metal and once that happens as you can see here the R group here the, the R group and the large auxiliary here are basically trans oriented to each other. So uh, uh, we can expect that uh, actually this and this is the same essentially there is no difference and uh, when the group attaches uh, uh, to the any um, electrophile is reacted with this enolate as we can see that since this large isopropyl group is alpha oriented then the incoming electrophile which is uh, going to attach onto this particular carbon atom because this has to break this particular oxygen metal bond will break and this enolate will then be having a nucleophilic center on this particular carbon atom. This nucleophilic center will then react with an electrophile where which is an electrophile here and of course you will get the product. It can also go onto the other side that is on the top. Basically what it means that when it when the, the enolate is going to react the, with the electrophile it would like to be oriented away from this particular uh, large isopropyl group. Since isopropyl group is alpha oriented therefore the attachment will take place from the beta side. So for example if we take this particular uh, compound and react with LDA uh, in the presence of THF or sodium hexamethyl disilazide. So basically it is sodium uh, plus hexamethyl disilazine you have N minus and Me2 uh, Me3Si twice. So it is hexamethyl disilazide and then when that reacts with allyl bromide you see now it gives a beta uh, orientation of the allyl group and then we can hydrolyze it with, with the base and therefore the hydrolysis takes place here and we get the corresponding acid in a very high uh, enantioselective pure product. Of course then auxiliary comes out and you can recycle the auxiliary. So this is how the um, 
the enolate uh, reacts with an, um, with an uh, electrophile uh, in an alkylation fashion. If we take uh, for example uh, this type of uh, auxiliary here uh, like this in which phenyl as well as the methyl uh, both of them are alpha oriented. This is even better because now you have two big larger groups uh, oriented in alpha fashion. Therefore, if we do the deprotonation here and react with an electrophile the major product will form here like this because these two are alpha oriented therefore the electrophile comes from the beta side and this is the alpha side. So, you, as you can see here that uh, under two different conditions uh, the uh, selectivity is 93 is to 7, 98 is to 2. Uh, normally the lithium uh, salts uh, uh, are better because when this uh, forms uh, uh, this kind of uh, enolate uh, when we have uh, auxiliary like this and uh, the enolate that is going to form would uh, be better uh, in terms of uh, uh, chelation when it is uh, lithium than when it is potassium or sodium. And therefore, the, that reflects also because uh, the, uh, this bicyclic uh, enolate has a better uh, effect in terms of uh, selectivity because then uh, there is no rotation around here. But if this particular chelate formation is somewhat loose then there is a rotation around here and then that can uh, uh, lead to uh, uh, the uh, uh, E enolate to form and that will lead to less selectivity. That is why this particular uh, selectivity as you can see one is 98 is to 2 other is 93 is to 7. Therefore, generally as we have seen lithium and boron enolates are better in terms of achieving uh, better selectivity. Now we look at uh, the chiral aldol reaction. We saw so far uh, chiral uh, uh, reactions, but that was alkylation reaction. Now this is a little bit uh, chiral uh, aldol reaction is somewhat uh, complex, then we will have to look at it very, very carefully. So uh, the same way as we did it in the earlier case, if we start with uh, this particular product uh, which is formed from the oxazolidinone uh, auxiliary uh, in which isopropyl group is alpha oriented. Now you react this with now the Unix base diisopropyl ethyl amine and Bu2BO3TF. We discuss how this can lead to the formation of uh, Z enolate. So now uh, what we have here is this is Z enolate um, and in which the methyl group and the auxiliary are of course trans to each other. Now uh, once this uh, Z enolate is formed uh, there is a better chelation between boron and oxygen just the way as we saw in the case of lithium and therefore this is a bicyclic uh, enolate where everything is prefixed. Now here as you can see that uh, the Z boron enolate which uh, has a bicyclic structure involves the boron and the oxygen of the uh, auxiliary in chelation. Therefore, the enol, enol boro, the boron enolate and the auxiliary itself has a chelation in it. But when the aldehyde comes into the reaction mixture, when it is dropped into the reaction mixture at low temperature of minus 78 degrees, then for the reaction to occur uh, in to give aldol product, there has to be uh, a chelation between boron and the aldehyde oxygen. And therefore, this particular uh, uh, chelation has to break down. So, uh, it is very important that uh, the uh, how does this uh, the chelation break and how does the new chelation occur that becomes a very important part. So, now it is something that we already know that uh, the uh, geometry of the enolate determines uh, 
whether uh, syn or anti aldol is going to form. And uh, of course, as we have seen that Z enolate will give syn aldol and E enolate will give anti aldol. And stereochemistry of the uh, auxiliary that means here this particular auxiliary the absolute configuration of the auxiliary would also determine the absolute configuration of the aldol products. Now we look at the oxazolidinone uh, basically is an amide and uh, uh, this particular part is essentially a carbamate and, uh, uh, and it is a very large uh, size and therefore the Z enolate formation occurs preferentially. Uh, even though there is a chelate in the boron enolate like this is what is the boron enolate, uh, this is the boron uh, where the metal is. Uh, the uh, aldol reaction will occur uh, when the uh, chelate forms uh, the breaks. Otherwise, there will be no Zimmerman Traxler transition state, something that we will discuss uh, soon. With this chelate gone, with the chelate that we saw it up with the enolate and the uh, auxiliary, there is a repulsive dipole dipole interaction. Like, for example, once this breaks, then uh, there will be a repulsive dipole dipole interaction between the oxygen atoms because this oxygen atom and this oxygen atom there will be once this is broken from here then we will see how these uh, have uh, dipole dipole repulsion and they, that allows the conformation to flip by 180 degrees. The result is still the aldol product but relative to the oxazolidine the phase of attack is opposite when we were doing alkylations. So, we will see that how does that happen. So, this is how it is. So, we can write uh, something like this here as you can see we can write uh, the oxazolidinone with uh, alpha oriented uh, isopropyl group. We can turn around 180 degrees and make it look like this also therefore now it is beta oriented. We have not broken the bond but we are simply changed 180 degrees. Now when this comes in contact with the aldehyde here now this particular oxygen boron uh, chelation breaks and then what happens is of course there is a dipole dipole repulsion here there is a delta negative here delta there is a delta negative and therefore the uh, orientation uh, has a, a dipole repulsion and this turns around there is a rotation around here uh, here to form this so that the carbonyl group comes down. So now this orient this enolate is the dipole is here whereas this dipole is here therefore there is no interaction between the two of them. In this situation now the uh, ketone has a chelation with the boron here and at this situation the uh, attack since this is alpha oriented and therefore the attack occurs from the beta phase from the top phase and the, the double enolate reacts with the aldehyde with, a, with the concomitant uh, chelation and the CC bond formation takes place from the beta C phase. And if that happens then of course the boron will be transferred to the oxygen and this oxygen boron bond is now broken by uh, the uh, oxidation with hydrogen peroxide and then of course the, the, the boron is uh, re relieved uh, taken out of the system and oxygen uh, comes out in the form of OH and is released as the corresponding aldol. Of course, we can write the same thing in a different form by just turning around by 180 degrees. So, this is how the syn diol is formed as the major product. Now, we can look at this in a slightly different way from the uh, uh, conformation angle. So, we can look at the Zimmerman uh, Traxler um, uh, transition state for example. If we look at this is how we started this is the product that this is the enolate that we started. The same enolate can be written up in this particular fashion where as you can see that the methyl group here is the methyl group here double bond is, <coughs> is here then the enolate and the methyl group are in the same direction as you can see here they are in the same direction here. And then when the aldehyde comes into the contact with the boron then it has uh, 
um, of course, the R group will remain in the equatorial form as we saw uh, in the last time uh, how the two possibilities of aldehyde uh, in the transition state it can be either axial or equatorial, but the axial one is sterically more hindered therefore it prefers to be equatorial. Here there are again two choices to that we have to see which direction the, the, um, the attack will occur uh, from the, as we say that it will attack from the top side that is C side or the re phase, C phase or the re phase. As you can see here the oxygen will have a chelation with the boron and therefore this uh, chelation will be somewhat like this. If this happens the R group is equatorially oriented and therefore the enolate will attack from the top side which is what is C phase because you have uh, this is the uh, oxygen of the aldehyde, this is the R and this is the hydrogen therefore we have a uh, anti-clockwise rotation of this particular phase and therefore this is the C phase where the enolate is going to attack. Once the attack takes place R comes into this particular form, OH comes from here of course after the hydrogen peroxide reaction CC bond formation takes place, methyl is here axial, hydrogen is equatorial and of course we get the, the auxiliary attached to the carbonyl group there which uh, we can also write something like this that the hydroxy group is going behind and the R group is coming towards us and the hydrogen is in the plane of the blackboard or uh, this particular board and then of course we have a methyl group in the board plane, the hydrogen is coming towards us and this particular bond is going behind. And the same thing can be written up in this way, uh, you can see that like for example if we turn uh, the R group which is beta oriented bring it to the into the, into the plane of the board below then the hydroxy group will go up and therefore it is beta and similarly for example if we bring the methyl group down this side then this particular uh, broken bond here which is the alpha bond goes into the plane if it goes into the plane that means it is coming towards if we just rotate it around here like this then it comes into the plane towards us in that situation the methyl group will of course uh, come down and, and then that is why it is looking like a, a beta oriented here. So basically it is a synaldol and uh, we can also write the same synaldol like this. So uh, this is the way the uh, uh, synaldol forms and uh, the uh, Sinaldol forms. Now uh, we look at the uh, reversal of diastereoselectivity. Now uh, we, how, how do we get the anti-aldol? If we have to get the anti-aldol, how do we get it? Now uh, what has been done that if we start with say for example this type of uh, uh, enol, uh, boron uh, enolate and uh, react with aldehyde. Now if we add uh, extra Lewis acid such as uh, diethyl aluminum chloride then what happens is that this, uh, this particular uh, chelation uh, does not break and the aldehyde comes in to contact with this enolate in this particular fashion because the aldehyde oxygen has this extra Lewis acid interacting with the, with the its oxygen. That means the aldehyde oxygen interacts with this. So it does not have any need to go and break the boron enolate and then interact with the boron. If that happens then of course we have such a situation which is coming into the picture and when such a situation comes of course in this case also as we can anticipate that the carbonyl group would be away from this particular enolate here or this uh, particular double bond uh, he, it would be away to an, allow the, uh, the repulsion to be less the dipole dipole repulsion and therefore the perfect orientation of this uh, group would be somewhat like this where R, H and ketone would be oriented in this way that is our carbonyl group will be oriented in this fashion. When this happens this allows the formation after the uh, hydrogen peroxide and of course uh, hydrolysis of the auxiliary that this particular part will give the acid 
the methyl group is here, R is here, H is here and OH is here. And this is uh, if we trans uh, can convert into the final orientation it would look like an anti aldol. So, this anti aldol formation is essentially taking place uh, uh, because we have not uh, uh, broken the uh, enolate, the boron enolate uh, and therefore this uh, diethyl aluminum as a Lewis acid allows the, uh, the orientation of the uh, transition state in such a way that we get the anti aldol which is the reversal of the diastereosyl activity. Now uh, we will uh, try and look at uh, the uh, enol silyl ether that means uh, silyl uh, um, enolates with, with having a silyl group. Now in this case uh, ireland claisen rearrangement is an, uh, is an important uh, uh, reaction which depends on the geometry of the enolate. We also saw the geometry of the enolates influencing the uh, formation of the uh, syn, uh, syn uh, product syn aldol and anti aldol. Of course, there we also saw that the Lewis acid made a difference. But uh, in this particular case, if we start with allyl alcohol and its ester that is allyl ester where you have a possibility of uh, uh, deprotonation here and if the deprotonation is uh, done and the enolate is trapped as a silyl ether or silyl enolate and if the reaction is uh, done at low temperature in the, in the solvent THF then what is found is that uh, we get uh, this type of uh, enolate of course but where this OX group and the R group are uh, trans to each other and here we have uh, in the presence of HMPA and THF as a solvent the uh, enolate gets changed it forms uh, OX and the R group they are now uh, cis to each other. So this is a cis enolate and this is a trans enolate. Now that allows the uh, formation when, he, when the rearrangement takes place, the Claisen rearrangement takes place here, it, then what happens is that the product that is going to be formed is such where the R1 group here and the R group here are cis to each other. And in this particular case, R group and R1 group are trans to each other. So this is a basically uh, the process in which two new asymmetric centers are being created here. There is an asymmetric center here and there is an asymmetric center here. So these new asymmetric centers are uh, as a consequence of the formation of the, the enolate because this double bond geometry is fixed in both the cases. The only difference is between the, the uh, geometry of the enolates and based on the geometry of the enolates the configuration of the final product is uh, of course determined. Uh, obviously in these cases we are talking about only the uh, achiral molecules and therefore this product will be anyway achiral unless we use chiral auxiliary into it. So uh, we will stop it at this stage to in today's class. Uh, you could uh, go ahead and look at what I have um, uh, talked uh, in the uh, this today's class and be prepared for the next class. Till then bye and take care.